Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're gonna to be going through one of the performance-based questions. We're gonna do the one on security control and framework types. Uh, it's a little misleading the way they, they say this, security control and framework types. You may think they were talking about security control frameworks like COBIT or NIST 800 series. They're not really talking about that, but we're gonna talk about the different types of security controls and hit on those topics in this uh, live stream today. If you have any questions, please leave a comment or email info at cybercrafttraining.com. Be happy to answer your questions. Thanks so much. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this one. Uh, pretty blind. I haven't looked at this one for a while. So let's read again as we go into this. I'm gonna go into this as if we're going into this on the test. So we'll read the scenario first. As a security consultant for a newly launched information technology company, you have assisted in the security planning process to ensure that the best security controls are in place. However, an organization cannot realistically plan for every situation, so processes and procedures need to be fluid and adjusted as security issues arise. With all the things considered, your company has asked that you attend, extend your consulting work past the initial planning process to assist with any security issues that arise in the first few months of business. As well, you help security, select security controls to resolve any such issues. Okay, this is one of those scenarios that tells us absolutely nothing of relevance. All it says is that we will select security controls. So we can just ignore this scenario, not refer back to this one. There's no key information here. That was just a waste of our time. So sorry, <laughs> but we're not gonna know that until we read the scenario. Okay, instructions, use the dropdown selectors to select appropriate control category, control type, and control to remediate the issue state in this scenario. And now this is important. We have control category, remediation needed. So this is gonna be control category, then we have a control type, and then the remediation step. Okay, now as you know, security controls are strategies we put in place to address security concerns, vulnerabilities, things of that nature. Uh, we can do these in response to vulnerabilities, or we can do this as part of business planning. Maybe we have a business impact analysis we've conducted and we wanna plan to mitigate potential vulnerabilities in the future. So we're gonna select a control category, a type, and then the remediation strategy. So those are the three things we're gonna select. Now, I, before selecting the dropdown, I'd wager that each of these, well, let's see what they are first off. Let's go with scenario one, IT admin. That last attack did some real damage. We need to add systems that identify malicious activity on our network immediately. This is another scenario as CompT likes to do this. Have somebody, they try and have somebody say something from their point of view. So this is from the point of view of the IT admin. The IT admin is saying, as is known by the speech balloon, that there was an attack. It did some real damage. We need to add systems that identify malicious activity on our network immediately. So that second part of the sentence is what we need to focus on. We need to select a control. A control is a strategy to address future problems, essentially. All right, so control category. Now there's three main categories of security controls, operational, managerial, and technical. Okay, and what they've done here, they've lumped everything together. So that's confusing. They don't just have operational, managerial, and technical here. They've also included all the control types. The types of controls are corrective, compensating, detective, deterrent, physical, and preventive. Okay, so we need to keep these separate, essentially, okay, in our brains. They've lumped it all together just to make the question confusing. So this first control, this is from an IT admin, this is gonna be a technical system, we need to add systems that identify malicious activity on our network immediately. So that's gonna be a technical control. Remember we have technical, operational, and managerial. That's gonna be a technical control. The control remediation type needed, well we want to identify malicious activity, so we need to be able to detect that activity. It's gonna be a detective control. So that's the type. Now let's take a look, we'll find a device here that is good at detection. Uh, an intrusion detection system, that fits the bill right there. I don't see anything else here that really does detection. So intrusion detection system would be the best 
uh, the best space. Host antivirus, if there wasn't any IDS, might be a solution. But IDS is what we're looking for, intrusion detection system. That could be host or network-based. If it's host-based, it's a HIDS. If it's network-based, it's a NIDS. We're going to select that. Okay, next one. This is from the point of view of the CEO. Our employees are visiting bad, unsecure websites way too often. But have we even stated that they shouldn't be doing this yet? Okay, this is a concern from the CEO. So, but have we even stated that they shouldn't be doing this yet? So perhaps we are not including this uh, as part of our onboarding procedures. We're not telling employees what they can and cannot do, what websites they can and cannot visit. Now, we can have a couple different strategies around this. We could have a technical control where we block or we only whitelist certain websites or we blacklist malicious websites. But this says, have we stated, have we even stated that they shouldn't be doing this? Now, this could be a banner that pops up, something that the the customer or the employee would have to read before logging on, or it could be something like uh, a policy document. So since it's from the CEO, it's from senior management, it's not from like an IT person, I'm going to assume that this is going to be operational or managerial here. That's uh, it's not a technical control. So I think this would be an operational control more than a managerial control. Now this could be confusing. You might think this is a managerial control because it's coming from the CEO, but the type, the control category, okay, doesn't necessarily relate to who's voicing the concern. So this would be probably an operational control. Something to do with our operational procedures, uh, policy documents fall under operational controls. So anything to do with policies and uh, policy documentation, those things are all operational concerns. So that that's why this would be an operational control category. And the control type, this would have to be, well, we're trying to prevent, we're trying to stop people from visiting these bad websites. So we would want to deter them from doing that. You could also argue corrective controls are usually used to guide user behavior. So it could be corrective control, but I'm going to go with deterrent on this one. I think just because of the way the CEO is saying this, our employees are visiting bad, unsecure websites way too often. Have we stated they shouldn't be doing this? Okay, so let's take a look at remediation. Remember we said that this could be like a banner or a policy of some sort. So a policy that fits this is actually the first one, acceptable use policy, AUP. Now they've used the acronym to add a little bit of confusion. Let's take a look at the rest of these. An alarm, that's physical, barriers physical. This is a technical control, technical, that's physical, and security audit. I mean, that, that's not gonna help us prevent anything or deter anything. Now permissions policy, you might think that that's designed right there, I, I could tell as a red herring, you would think permissions policy would apply here, what permissions are we giving the employees? Permission policy, that relates to the permissions, the technical permissions that we give our employees, what software they can access, what devices they can access. So it doesn't really apply here. Acceptable use policy, this is presented to an employee as part of onboarding when they were first hired to tell the employee what they can access, how they can use the, the company resources. So that really fits the bill of what we're going to do here. So we're going to go with uh, deterrent here. Or I mean AUP. Okay, let me get my big head out of the way. You can see who's talking here. Uh, scenario three, this is the chief information officer, the CIO. It appears that anyone, a little better dressed than the CEO, anyway. It appears that anyone could possibly walk into the server room. We need to evaluate and ensure only authorized people can enter. Okay, that one's pretty straightforward. Anybody walking into the server room, we need to ensure only authorized people enter. So this is obviously gonna be some sort of physical control. Now physical controls are gonna follow, follow under the uh, managerial category, okay? Any physical controls, protections of physical assets, that's gonna be a managerial type control. So that's gonna help 
Remember, operational, that's more policy-based, managerial controls. These have to do with um, physical structures, how personnel um, go about business, how they operate from the day to day. So that's gonna be a managerial control. And this is gonna be a physical control just because we need to limit access, physical access to a server room. So that's why that's gonna be a physical control. Okay, now let's take a look at the remediation. I believe these are all the same. Yeah, they look all the same to me. So the one that makes sense here is key card entry. Key card entry is a physical control. A barrier would be the best answer if we didn't have key card entry. We're trying to control access to a server room. One of the important things to have in place when access, when controlling access to a restricted area like a server room is to incorporate some sort of audit mechanism, okay? And that's spoken to here by the CIO's concern. We need to evaluate and ensure only authorized people can enter. So there has to be some sort of authentication that occurs at the point of entry. Because that says authorized, that's a keyword we can clue in on to determine, okay, we need to have some sort of control that addresses that authorization piece. What can do that here is a key card entry. Because a key card, an RFID card, can have a set of credentials for the employee. Employee can scan their key card, and then that employee's activity can be tracked and monitored, and logs can be generated for that. So we're going to put install key card entry. All right, does anybody think we should change anything here? This is, uh, this one's pretty straightforward, but it's a little tricky in some senses. I think we're okay. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. Let's see what we do. Okay, we got, them. all right, great. So let's take a look at what uh, CompT is telling us here. Three categories when it comes to controls, right? We mentioned that operational, technical, managerial. Uh, operational controls or controls for the human element, policies and procedures and training. Yep, technical are those for hardware and software and managerials relate to oversight of a system. Um, and then I would also include that physical access and that accountability, that authorization piece. Okay. Managerial controls also relate to when you need to select your strategy, your risk strategy determining your risk appetite and the, your control strategy in general. All right, then we have the types of controls, the different types, preventive, physical, deterrent, detective, corrective, and compensating. We got a lot of questions on compensating controls. Let me just explain compensating controls. Uh, it says here that this, these are used to restore or back up a system, okay? Compensating controls are also used to be put in place when a control fails or is temporarily unavailable. So imagine if you have a camera system on the outside of your building and the cameras you know, break for some reason, maybe there's an electrical storm. You could post guards on the outside of the building. That would be a compensating control. You're compensating for the loss of the camera with the security guards who you know, have eyes, they can look and they can see any activity that's going on. Similar thing, maybe you have a, a backup, uh, you have a server cluster. So if one server fails, you have another server that can take over. That's a compensating control. You're compensating for a loss. Okay. And then the last part, yep, yeah, it just explains what we selected there. So, yeah, we did a pretty good job there. Any questions on, on this question? This is a pretty tough one. I mean, it was a little straightforward, but there were very tricky points. Now, my advice to you when you're going through the exam, cue in on those key words. Cue in on that authorized portion. Uh, have we even stated? If we're stating, has to be in a policy, okay? We state things in policies and documents. And then we need to identify malicious activity, tells us that this is detective. So those are the key words that can help there. Well, I do hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in Security Plus training, uh, check the links in the description. We have self-paced and live training available. We have some classes started uh, in January and you can get a discount if you use that code YouTube uh, that's in the description for 200 off. If you have any questions, email me info at cybercrafttraining.com. I'll, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. 
about Security Plus or any of the other certifications. 